Hello and welcome to the second episode of TCC Roundtable. Uh, like in the first episode, we again have an eclectic mix of authors. And the great thing about this episode is the, all the authors that we have, I've, I've written books in completely different genres. To give you an example, uh, PB Flowers' book, uh, I Subscribe, is in the sci-fi genre. And Lavanya Krishnamurti's uh, Time and Tide Wait for Love is in the romance genre. Although it, it also holds a bit of sci-fi, as in it includes a little bit of time travel. And then Abhishek Sinha, his uh, book by Hook or by Crook, is in the crime thriller genre and Preeti's book uh, is in, it, 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 it can be said an amalgamation of genres. It's a bit of, bit of historical fiction, bit of YA, bit of slithing and a uh, bit of mystery and suspense. So welcome Preeti, welcome Suman, Lavanya, Abhishek to TCC Roundtable. Uh, this is a sort of informal discussion amongst authors. So you can be yourself, you can talk about your books, other books that inspired you, uh, the stories, your characters, and you know everything that's got to do with writing, uh, your books and the books that you're reading, perhaps currently the books that have inspired you, right? So uh, we'll just start. We'll just start with very small introductions, so we don't take a lot of time. Uh, we'll start with Suman. Uh, just a little bit of introduction about yourself and your book. Then we'll come to Lavanya, Preeti, and Abhishek. Men last always Abhishek. So. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Niladri, and I'm so happy to be here today. Um, a little introduction about myself. I am an Indian American author and um, I have written six books so far and my primary genre is sci-fi, but it has a strong undertone of romance in it because my inspiration is my husband and obviously he's not romantic, but, <laughs> but I am very romantic. <laughs> yeah, and so my book has... Um, my writing is always um, my writing always has um, metaphysical aspect to it because my husband um, gives me a lot of metaphysical theory. He wonders about creation in a different way, and I wonder about creation in a scientific way. So that's why my books have um, a blend of those two. So I started writing um, during I think after the COVID times, which is true for a lot of writers these days. <laughs> So uh, that's when I started writing and um, and now I'm like six books into and um, I think I'm just going to keep going. Okay, so come to Lavanya then. Lavanya, a little bit about your book and yourself. Uh, yeah, hi. So uh, I am basically a doctor, ophthalmologist by profession and a writer by passion. So I started uh, writing since childhood, you know, poems, travelogues and stuff. So uh, I have so far uh, written uh, three books, that is uh, three full length books and uh, contributed to two anthologies, one short story anthology and one anthology of uh, poems. So uh, the current book that we are talking about, uh, Time and Tide Wait for Love, which uh, it just got released now. So uh, can I just uh, tell a little bit about the story or shall we talk about that later? No, you can. You can. You can share about the story. Absolutely. <laughs> Why not? So yeah, again, basically, um, as uh, Suman said, I'm also a, a romantic at heart. So my stories would also have a lot of uh, elements of romance in them. So my first uh, book, I Prescribe Love, was a tale of uh, medical college romance. And the current one, Time and Tide Wait for Love, it uh, involves time travel, romance, and uh, concepts like, you know, karma and uh, rebirth. So it is based on uh, the, it was based on a thought that came to me like, you know, if only I could go back in time and undo some events in my life, mm -hmm. how would that change the way I'm living my life today? So that was the premise for my uh, current story, Time and Tide, Wait for Love. So yeah, that's that. So that's, a, that's an interesting thought because I think one of the, I don't know whether to call it a fantasy or just a musing or whatever, but one thing that I quite often think about is that if I could go back in time and change a few things or even if not change a few things just soak in the atmosphere of what there was you know in the past you know um, 
Yeah, my parents are not yeah. there, so maybe you know, talk to them one more time, not to bring them back or change anything so that they don't die, but at least talk to them yeah. for a for a day. You know, or, or before I used to live in a joint family, so there was a lot of people around, and now there isn't. So sometimes I feel like going back to that atmosphere. So I think that's a universal thought. I think a lot of people, if not everyone, at some point or time or the other, feels that they want to go back in time and and maybe you know. Maybe to change things, maybe to soak in the past atmosphere, whatever it might be. Yeah, just to relive those few moments, you know, and feel good about it. Okay, so Preeti. Hi, Niladri. Hi, everyone. So I am, uh, I'm an architect. I'm an urban designer, and I'm a history buff, and I'm a professor, and now I am an uh, I'm a writer. Also, I keep forgetting what all I do. But uh, yeah, so uh, Niladri knows how I was arm twisted into writing the book by my daughter. And uh, uh, writing is something I have always enjoyed. As, you see, you're uh, very faint. Your voice is a little is too it? faint. One sec. Is it okay now? No, is it's it better? Still faint. Still faint? Suman, Lavanya, I mean, can you hear pretty properly? I I can, I can hear, hear her, her well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can hear her too. Yeah. No, I can hear her, but it's very faint. So, I, if you could just. Is it, is it okay? Is it okay now? Uh, now it's better, 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 okay, better okay. than before. Yeah. Okay. So, I've got this mic thingy right in front of my mouth. I'm talking now. Is it okay? So, I was, uh, I was listening to Lavanya and uh, I was actually wondering. Uh, rather wishful thinking that, you know, if I could have some more time with my dear ones who passed. And uh, that's where my head was when you suddenly asked me to talk. So I'm completely disconcerted. Okay, Nilati. So I'm going to go again. So I am Preeti Nayak. And uh, again, I am an architect, an urban designer, uh, a history buff. I love traveling. I'm a mom to two teenage girls. And... Uh, my better half is also an architect. So uh, our discussions, uh, they are usually uh, order for thought. And uh, all of them, my family inspires me to write, actually. Right now, they're having a party. And I, 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 I had kept my mic on mute so that <laughs> they wouldn't start uh, screaming and shouting suddenly. So they were cheering <laughs> So you might just see me looking sideways and you know asking them keep quiet this way <laughs> yeah so uh, they, they are my hope they are my uh, strength they are uh, the wind beneath my wings all of them so uh, yeah and uh, I my first book Scar Roses uh, it's part of a series uh, it's it's a bit of like Niradri said it's a bit of YA it's a bit of historical fiction uh, it's a bit of supernatural, there's a bit of detective in it. Largely, it's a crime thriller and, you know, it's, it's everything. But mostly, it is a, a tribute to a historical figure we all should have known about, a real historical figure. And uh, I'm hoping I can continue the trend ahead with... Uh, my other books in the series and uh, research is ongoing about that. That's a little bit of good news if at all <laughs> for you. I'm still I'm searching now who else will feature in the second part of the book. So that's about me. Yeah. I was I was just uh, telling Suman before we started that Preeti's book Scarred Roses is the longest editing project that I've ever had. Oh, is it? We started way back when and then. <laughs> and and also the way we finished was really strange. We were trying for a competition, right? So uh, Preeti suddenly calls me two weeks before the deadline is over saying that I want to compete. Can I do it? And I'm like, yeah, I think you can. And then on the last day, the day the uh, we were supposed to uh, submit it, uh, Preeti is still writing at that time, right? So, so she's still writing. She's writing one chapter and I'm editing it here and, and she's sending me, I'm editing it, sending it back to her. Okay, this is how we worked and finished the book. So, yeah, it was a great experience, yeah. <laughs> but I, I I wouldn't recommend it again. Yes, yes, too, in hindsight. Too, too difficult. Uh, yeah, yeah, in hindsight, I was thinking, uh, 
I, I'd rather, uh, I should have waited for a bit more. You know, let the competition go. And then maybe uh, I should yeah. have published it. But then uh, had I let it go, it would have gone for another year, Nilandri. So it's better that it came out. And that was, that yes. was your advice, actually. Also, me. we went along the flow. You know, there was this, you know, yes. there was George that up. So it was over. No, it would have stalled again. Because yes, the book yes, kept definitely. on stalling for, you know, some sometimes I would get a project, get busy. Sometimes Preeti wouldn't be able to write. It just went on and went on and on. Right. So Abhishek sitting with the background of his own book cover. Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. I am Abhishek Sinha. Uh, so I am from Bangalore. Uh, my uh, hometown is in Bhopal. I've been writing stories, uh, short stories since quite a few years. It started back in my days, undergrad days at IIT Delhi, where I started writing short stories across different genres. Uh, so, in fact, by hook or by crook was part of uh, that those uh, coll uh, that collection of short stories which I had. But someone recommended to go ahead with this particular story and convert it into a full length novel, and that's how this book was born. Uh, it's basically a story of two brothers. One of them goes missing, and the other one is on a hunt to find his brother. And uh, in that chase, he uh, uncovers different mysteries which are wrapping up the fictional Indian city, which is the setting of this book. Uh, so uh, I have been getting amazing and very humbling feedback for the book, and it's very encouraging for me. Uh, so, but unlike uh, Lavanya and Suman here. I am I am not a criminal at heart, which uh, provoked me to write this book. As in, uh, this is just a creation of mine across different genres. Uh, and yeah, so I guess that's what happens when you have one uh, single guy in a panel of all the married folks. You get a crime thriller or you get a crime fiction out of it. Yeah, so uh, jokes apart, I am very excited to be part of this panel and uh, super proud to be sharing this podium with three amazing ladies here. Yeah. It's 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 a it's a thing about people who write crime, right? Or, or people who write crime into their uh, stories. They have to keep on explaining themselves. Say, hey, I'm not like that, huh? Because I've written a book that has nine murders. You can imagine. <laughs> and and very creative murders, you know. The murders happen very creatively. So you can imagine how deep how sometimes I have to tell people, hey, I'm not like that. That's not the bent of my mind. It's just that the story needed to be told that way. Yeah, exactly. And then when you are yeah. writing crime, you can't have it all, all of them in a similar manner. You have to have different styles of uh, murder. We come with a disclaimer. Yeah. We come with a disclaimer. We are not like that. Okay. <laughs> Unlike romance uh, uh, romance authors, they can say we are romantics at we heart and at that's heart what we write. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We feel it and we write it. We can't say that. We can't say we feel it. <laughs> then there's a problem. Yeah, but, so, but you do, you, you do at some level. <laughs> You have to understand the main theme and the character, right? No, I think I think I was I I've always been very fascinated with uh, serial killers. To be very honest, I still am. I might write another one of serial killers. Everybody is ninety nine percent of the population is they don't admit it, but they are. Huh. I I have always been with the psyche, with the with the you know everything. I've been very uh, uh, fascinated, and I and I felt that while, while writing my book, okay, I, I mean, I don't want to talk about myself, but honestly, when writing my book, I felt that a lot of uh, serial killer stories are told from the other point of view, from the point of view of a cop or a, an investigating yeah. office or something. So I wanted to tell it from a serial killer's point of view. And I did not want to make the serial killer slasher, wearing a long jacket and, you know, going out with a scalpel at night. Yeah. It's a normal girl. It can be, it can be that way, right? No, yeah, most of them are very good. The serial killers are very good at putting up a persona where you can't tell that they are yeah. that way. Exactly, yeah. because how do you know? So maybe sometimes some you may meet someone on the road who's a serial killer. How do you know that? Oh yeah, yeah. So nothing, I mean, nothing is written. Right? You, if you would, you can arrest them. But so that's that's the whole thing. Yeah, so, open question: How long did it take for you to write your book? Like the but this particular book for. Okay, everybody has their book covers now. Uh, no, only Preeti also has card verses. Suman is already in sci-fi. Yeah, uh, I'm in sci-fi. It's all my book covers over there. Huh. And love and <laughs> so in sci-fi. So I just, this I just, I just have a wall behind me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 it, it has, I call white as, uh, you know, limitless possibilities. Exactly, blank so, canvas. You know, yeah. So, 
Yeah, blank canvas. Oh, I'm so I'm sorry. Well, what? Who was that question for, Niladri? It's an open question. Everything in here is in, in this discussion is open. Like, how long oh, do you take to write yeah. the book? So I'm going to I'm going to hog the mic then I'll tell you. So my book I wrote actually, um, I think in um, three months and then it took three months to edit it. So, <laughs> so I, total. yeah, six in total. And um, that was because I, when I'm, when I start writing, the idea starts flowing and I don't want to stop. So I just keep writing, keep writing. And then I realized that editing is a big, big part of you know of a book unless it's polished it's it your thoughts you know your thoughts you know how it's flowing in your head but the book it doesn't flow that way and when you edit it that's only when you realize oh oh my god it's not making any sense it was making sense in my head so so i wrote the book in three months but then i took another three months to edit it but it was a small book like According to me, it's a small book. It's it's only two fifty pages, I think. Lavanya, so this particular one, time and tide. Um. Uh, well, actually speaking, the writing process did not uh, take me very long. Uh, probably two months. Were max was how long it took me to write. But I wrote this uh, quite some years ago. To be precise, in two thousand nineteen, I wrote this. so after that um, well after that it was a challenge for me to find a publisher ready to take up the book as with uh, most authors as how most authors struggle then finally i came across uh, my literary agency and i submitted it to them and then uh, post that it took another nearly one and a half to two years for the book to come out so as such my writing process did not really take me that long it was done in two months but for the book to come out it took uh, you know a significant amount of time after that so it came out just now in uh, 2023 the so publishing the publishing that, the, the it, publishing process was the more time taking one yeah yeah exactly the edits uh, the initial edits and the second round of edits and back and forth and you know the book being pitched to various publishers getting agreements publishing agreements so the mm. whole process i think abhishek must also be aware of this whole process so since he went through the same agent and mm. uh, so on the whole it took me uh, from the point i submitted my manuscript it took me exactly 2 years to uh, get it published so that is what happened that that also that also brings me to another interesting question you know that that and this is only for lavanya and abhishek because i know you two have been through an agent and the publishing grind uh how does it feel to wait that long like you have suppose today i i've written my book right i've i finished my book today november 2023 and my book gets released in 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 say to 2025 in june in 2025 so that is a long time right if you if you think of it now it's a long time long time away so how do you deal in how do you, how how do you deal with that period of you know uh, uh well it doesn't it is not i have to be honest and say it was not a very uh, easy wait it was quite impatient and sometimes i would get frustrated as well you know like uh, i wish my book would come out and seeing a lot of our th other authors books uh, being released from the same group and all uh, it it was definitely a frustrating period for me and there were moments when i found it difficult to cope but somehow i just held on to hope that it would come out so yeah but also one one little advantage that you had which i i i presume abhishek did not have is that you already had a, one or two books out in the in the in the market so it was not like this was your first book but for someone like abhishek this was your first book right so how did how, how do you cope up with that one one and a half year or two year lag whatever the time was for the book to get published actually it was uh, a bit impatient 
uh, of me to just keep bugging my agent about what's the result. And then again, he was also very helpful in that respect that he would be passing on feedback as, as he would receive it from the publishers. So it was mostly, so I did not have a time frame in mind as in I have to wait for two years or what. He just kept telling me that, uh, see, these all contracts we have. If you want to wait for more, we can still wait. Otherwise, we can proceed with one of these. So it was more of a conscious call that I took that it's okay to wait for a bit longer and just wait for more results to come in before we make a, a calculated decision. Uh, mm. Plus, at the same time, at least for me, I was working into multiple different things. I was working for my company. I was doing a startup. So time was anyway going to be a challenge for me. So if it had come up... Uh, prior to when it actually released, I would not have been able to put in as much effort as I did actually. So uh, from my side also, it was no hurry as such, at least in my case. But yes, uh, whenever I got impatient, I had a mentor in my uh, publishing agent who would just come console me and tell me about the exact process and where is it taking more time and what is the tentative weight I can, uh, it can take for me, my book to go out. Mm. No, that's a fair point. That's a fair point that, that you know, you, you, you were uh, engrossed in other things, you were busy and, and it kept on. But if, if, if we take someone who's, you know, maybe someone, okay, the, the population of that kind of people is very less, but someone whose primary job is to write books, right? Uh, and, and they've written one, you have already spent about six to eight months in writing the book. Then perhaps another another two to three months, let's say, in editing and everything. So you have already spent a year on the book. And then to wait for another two years to for the book to come out. And if you are writing other books by then, don't you think the other books will take precedence over, over the book that's already in the burner for two years? So when it eventually comes out, you're not attached that much attached to it, or you don't you can't devote that much time to it. Or the release of that book impedes upon the release of uh, the other books that you have. So uh, two points, actually. First is, uh, see, if someone is actually full time into this and uh, then again, this has to be, there are three models currently live in the market. Uh, people also go for self-publishing at times or they can wait for a traditional publisher, mm -hmm. which usually takes much longer the time frame which we are talking about. Mm -hmm. And then there is another model which has been introduced, which is of partnered publishing, mm -hmm. which is somewhere in between these two right mm -hmm. so again for someone who is actually aware of these three models might be able to better position himself or herself to make a call here but at the same time the thing which you just said if you, i'm aware that uh, i like in my case i was very desperate to get a traditional publisher i did not want to get into self or partner publishing mm -hmm. so i was okay to take that waiting period of 1.5 to 2 years and within that time uh, i think as you also said someone might start with another project now Okay. And then that one entire year goes into completion of this project and pitching the book to other publishers. Right. And then once you are uh, parallelly working on pitching this book to other publishers or agents is when you hear about the first one actually getting a contract. And that that's when you start with the marketing uh, plan for the other one, the first book. So I think this is more going to be a cycle for someone who is full time into writing that part that the waiting period you utilize for either marketing your previous works or thinking about or doing research for your next work because you can't do anything uh, with respect to this particular book you can only wait for this book so uh, i think that's okay, what yeah, is the optimum way suman any 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 thoughts on this well uh, i think uh, see uh, for me the entire uh, writing process itself doesn't start and end with just writing the book. Huh. This book particularly uh, had its genesis in 2015 and it finally came out in 2021, was it? 21, right? Mm -hmm. No, or was it 22? We so started, 20, I think, 22. in Scarred Roses. Yes. Uh, Scarred Roses 22. in 21, 21. 21, was it? Okay, 21, we started definitely. in 21. Start in okay. 21. And then even then, uh, it started evolving. And as you write, uh, it kind of uh, takes shape. So uh, if, if I were to go to a traditional publisher and then wait for two years more for that labor of love to come out, uh, I don't know what I would have done. It, it's, it's actually a test of patience also. Because... Uh, once you've worked on, uh, see, for me, it's it's not an it's not an isolated book, not a standalone. It's a series. Mm -hmm. 
Hmm. So the series concept comes first and then uh, you have to kind of pitch each, each part and which part will come first. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, juggling which happens there. Uh, so, I know it's, uh, it's actually very difficult you know, to wait that long. Hmm. So, uh, which is why, I, in fact, I opted for self-publishing as well. Because I wanted it to come out at a particular time and uh, particularly for mid-career professionals like me, this is the time when we are peaking career-wise as well. So uh, either I can drop everything that I've studied for, been educated for, and which I'm equally passionate about for writing, which might not be that motivating or rewarding because of the long extended periods of it. I, I still remember how earnestly and how eagerly I was waiting for my first review to come out and uh, when it did you know I, I actually called you and I cried that okay somebody liked it you know and you know somebody's written a review and we wanted to go organic uh, so it's it was it was very uh, painstaking you because once once you've written something you wanted to go out there it's it's nerve-wracking actually hmm. so you want people to react to it so that's why you write also, right? You put your thoughts in there. It's not like you've just written a message in a bottle and thrown it off. It's a story. You want people to react to it. You're a storyteller. You need an audience. So I think the date in is pretty grueling, uh, especially in traditional. Now that I'm looking uh, to go for print copies uh, of my book, so we're still thinking, right? Uh, how do we go about it? And uh, mm -hmm. should we go traditional? Should we go self-publishing? And mm. maybe once we have the entire kit, then maybe for the second series, in the series we pitch. Because mm. I have the series draft ready. Mm. That way. Mm. So I think it's it's actually a, a test of patience, really. And it is. Uh, yeah. I mean, what happens, what happens to me is that I can, I can, I can, I can have all the patience in the world before I write a book or after while I'm writing it. But once I've written it, I don't have any more patience. I cannot let it, you know, uh, let it linger on for even maybe say a month. Yes. So I'm, I'm done with, with the book. You. I want it to be out. Yes. You, you can say I, I crave appreciation. That's one way of putting it that you want to get the appreciation as far as fast as you can or the uh, critique. Uh, that might be true. I'm not sure. But I just do not have the patience to wait for two years. And I, and I respect people who can wait for two years. I really absolutely, absolutely. It's not, it's not easy. It's not, it's not yes. easy that once you've written your book, you wait for two years or, or as Abhishek said, you wait for the correct opportunity because once I've written a book and any opportunity comes my way, I would feel it's correct. You know, And that's personally speaking. If, if I, I might be more objective if I'm telling someone else. You know, if somebody comes to TCC and, and takes consultancy and, and I'm telling them what to do, I, I would be more objective. But when it comes to my own book, I am not objective at all. Completely understand. So, so hats off to both of them. Abhishek and Lavanya waited for two years, yeah. and uh, it's it's actually a test of patience, really. What about you, Suman? If if tomorrow I I tell you that okay, you have written this book, it will take uh two years to publish. What would you do? Um. See, here's the thing. I think there are two things. If I have written something that's time sensitive and it is it has to be released you know, within a certain period of time to make sense and to draw in that kind of readers, then I would obviously not like it. I would, Good point. you know, it, it's like death of your work because it's not current anymore. So, so in that sense, I would feel that, you know, I need someone who can do it right away. I know that you can self-publish, but then comes the marketing, which TCC is very good at. So we could use that, but I think it's, it's, it's it's just that if you have written something which is timeless sure if you want to traditionally publish it mm. you can go ahead and wait for it mm. but if it's time sensitive then it's i don't, I don't know mm. i don't know how, mm. how people work with traditional publishers and release a book within a month of something that happened i don't know how that happens it's because point. i've seen yeah, that it's a very good point yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a very good point. See, yes, it's it's it. Why I'm saying why why it's a good point is I'll explain I'll explain why I think it's a very very good point is because 
lots of books were written about the pandemic, about COVID. So had it come out today, I don't think so. It just, it, 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 it would have had the same effect as the books that came out during the pandemic or just after the lockdown was over, right? Suppose I'm a very fast writer, right? I sit down today and tomorrow and day after and I jot down 20,000 words about the heartbreak of India losing the World Cup final, right? And it gets published maybe say so after such a long time when India won another World Cup perhaps. So it just wouldn't, right? Even if it's published after one year, there's the T20 World Cup next year and, and let's hope that India wins it. Right. And after that, right after India wins the World Cup, I bring out a book, The Heartbreak of India Losing the World Cup. Does it make sense? Yeah, it, it loses its meaning. That's the thing. Right. But if you if you if you have written something timeless, then yes, it can work out. But you just so, need yeah. to have that patience. Again, a lot of respect to people who have the, that kind of patience. I'm very impatient, actually. I don't I have zero patience for anything. <laughs> Also, 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 Suman, Suman writes for fun. Like, yeah. okay, we all write for fun, but the thing is, she, she's really quick in bringing out books. Yeah, I, I, I only write. I have like idea for two more books right now, and I'm, and I can't write it because, um, I'm trying to polish my, um, first the debut work, which is, which needs a lot of polishing. Let's I just have say that. ten more ideas. It shows that it's, it's just, huh? What? I have at least 10 ideas in my head, but none on yeah. paper. Yeah, see, that's the thing. That's the thing. That's that's why I started writing, actually. Um, and and I know that it could be true for many authors and writers. I don't know. I don't know how I can't relate to it. But the thing is that I don't understand writer's block. That's what I don't understand. Because I am bubbling with ideas. I'm bubbling with too many ideas. I don't understand writer's block. I, I need time, actually. And I don't okay, have who has that. faced writer's block? I definitely have. I definitely have faced writer's block. I mean, uh, not with uh, this book, Time and Tide at least, but uh, the book that I have written after that, which is yet to be published, and one more that I'm working on, you know. I started them off more than a year ago, and then there was a slump, and mm. I was not getting any idea, you know. I was just mm. stuck over there, and it was so frustrating. So I just let it go for a couple of months, and all of a sudden, out of the blue, you know, two days back, I got inspired. Okay, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to write. And after months, I suddenly get that spark. So I I face this kind of situation plenty of time. So I really envy Suman when she says she doesn't know what writer's block is. Abhishek, and I yeah, writer's even block I ever faced. So I am writing another story where I had to write about three different murders, and that is where and it was all from different POVs. So it was essentially to write those scenes. I had uh faced big time writer's block as in how do I exactly come in? Because there are certain constraints within which those murders have to happen. So uh, based on that, I could not actually uh, think of ideas. I took a break and then somehow I somehow uh, swiveled through that. So, but it, it's a very recent experience for me. I was just wandering around here and there searching for idea and my friends would just look at me and say, Bhai, kya soch raha hai tu? and I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm thinking about how to commit a murder. <laughs> yeah. So that's a very what about oh, I mean I mean I mean there 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 have been times okay that I, I I'm trying to write something and and it's not happening not because I don't know what to write but because the scene is just too difficult to write it affected me personally it just affected me emotionally I I can I can even tell you what scene it is I mean Preeti has read my book she would know there's a there's a there's a there's a rape scene in 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 uh, letters of nine and it 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 took me two weeks to write that scene to be honest i was not getting through it because i knew for the story to go forward it had to be a bit uh what do you say descriptive and there's a fine line between being descriptive and being crass and also if the subject was such that it just took a lot out of me I still, uh, somebody, uh, Chitra asked me that there was something about, about Letters of Nine. We were talking and, and, I, and I told her that it was the toughest scene that I've had to write. 
although i've written about murders and blood and gore and time travel and you know reincarnation and two people uh, uh sharing the same soul uh, in the same timeline they're not supposed to i've written about all those kind of stuff it just remains the hardest that i've had to write so any instances actually, as such where a yeah, scene sort of brought upon writer's so block or about... was too difficult to write yeah so when you talk about uh, this particular scene of uh, rape which is uh, so in not not in by hook or by crook but in the next story which i am writing where i just wrote about three murders there is also a rape scene which is required and then my problem with that was not the because i could not even go to the intensity of that scene at the first place i had to justify it from the uh, uh, culprit's point of view also as to why is this act actually happening and that was the major block for me as to how do i even justify i don't think anything can justify this so then again uh, had to uh, take support of some of the cliche ideas of revenge and all but again still to, till date i am not convinced with that and i am still looking for more ideas on how do i make it more believable for anyone that yeah something of this sort can happen but uh, again yeah very relatable for me yeah it's difficult it's really yeah. difficult can i say something um ah, sure. yeah so i was i was saying that um, you know the writers block that we are talking about i think i'm getting a little confused here because the thing is that when you guys are talking about you already have a story in mind you have a scene in mind you just don't know how to uh, put your uh, put creativity in it so that it comes across hmm. to your readers you know um so i think th- I think that that remains a problem with me also but but it doesn't stop me like it doesn't stop me for days together or for weeks or for months I don't get slumped that way I I still I still just keep writing keep writing whatever it is and then I reread it and then see if it's making any sense to me or not No if you're talking about the other kind of writer's block then I'm facing it for 2 years now <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So because I've heard, I've seen that in uh, movies and stuff, and I've heard that um, for real, also for in real life, also that writers, you know, they have a contract for like two or three books with their prob- publishers, and they are just not getting an idea to even start a book. So I was, I was kind of talking about that. But yeah, if you already have a story in mind and you are just trying to put it the best way possible you know, to communicate it the best way possible, then yeah, then I think everybody faces that. And as as far as um, the, I'm sorry to hone on that rape scene uh, a little, because I'm just saying that my take is always very raw and very different. And it is never, uh, it, it uh, Niradri had said something to me that he said that whenever you write a book, it has to connect to people at a human level, you know, there has to be a human connection. And I miss that. I always miss that because, <laughs> Because my take is very raw and very different. So when it comes to rape, like like you are saying, you're trying to, um, you're writing it from the um, the, the criminal perspective, or the, yeah, the, the perpetrator, yeah. So when you are trying to do that, if I if it was me, I would be like, I did it because I wanted to. What else? I mean, would this, there has to be a reason for it? Why? If there has to be a reason, then there there will be a solution for it. Sometimes there is no solution. Sometimes it's just the way you are. And and so, you know, that that could that that would be me. That would be me. If I'm writing, that's me. I'm not going to look for reasons. <laughs> so, that but, is why someone needs that. beta readers and editors at a disposal. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, you you read I subscribe, right? The book that we are talking about right now. So I in I subscribe, there is something like that. There is um there is actually incest in there, and and there and there is no reason. Like the whole world, the the humans are trying to give their own perspective to the girl who it happened to. I mean, they have their own ideas at, as to why this happened, but the the main character is an alien, and mm. he's like he's like he's like who cares. Who cares? It happened. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just give a more uh, humanized pop culture ish reference of it. Cersei and Jamie just love each other. You can't help it. Okay. So, I mean, I mean, it's yeah. it's raw because because of society. I, I feel Niladi that it's because of the society that we want to yeah. look for reasons and justify every action. Um, you know, it has to be categorized. 
if it is good or bad. And and to me, it's it's just there. It's an event. That's all. Yeah. See, it's not wrong. I mean, I mean, there are there are lots of act. If you're if if you're saying that uh, fiction resembles uh, society or the real world, there are a lot of things happen in the real world just because they happen. You there there is not no ostensible reason for it. There is not always a reason for things to happen, right? I think I think the biggest biggest uh, 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 example of that are love stories. Yeah, yeah. I mean, truth right? is stranger than I fiction. I mean, you just fall in love. Is there is there always uh, an ABC of why you fall in love with a certain person? Yeah. There isn't. So you fall in love, right? And and their books start that way. The first chapter, they are madly in love with each other. Two characters. Yeah. In the first mm-hmm. chapter itself. So how did that how did that emotional equity build up? I have no idea, but sometimes things don't need a uh, uh, a reason yeah right okay lavanya like, one question oh, for you. you oh lavanya sorry one 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 question for you how much of 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 reality is is there in your books not only this one but all that you have written i i know about your previous books um reality as in you mean how much of it is based on events from my real life based or 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 how much does it mirror the the society around you mm. i i know i know about preeti so i'm going to ask her last even if i ask her at all so i know about preeti's and 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 i know about suman's also okay so i'm more interested in in, in learning this from you and abhishek and i have a fair idea about abhishek also honestly okay so i uh, so generally when i write i try to tap into the emotions and feelings that my character feels you know so that um, uh when somebody reads it i want to be i want them to be able to relate to it i want them to be able to relate ki okay in this situation this is how i would have reacted or this is have done so hmm. i can relate to this character and that character uh, kind of you know stays with them because of that reason so i i kind of i like writing like that because i take examples from situations that happen around me hmm. so i take those situations and i kind of fictionalize them and i add my own twist to it so i would say that a lot of uh, events in my books are uh, you know based on events that do happen in the society or you know in and around us so that is just how i i like to write because i like it uh, to be relatable to my readers i'll i'll alter the question a little bit for abhishek like you're a, you're a crime fiction writer right so so when you when you read something in the in the newspaper perhaps or on the internet or you watch a news that something has happened somewhere okay do you feel like okay this is good material i just i'll just i'll just take it and store it and use it later for my uh, stories definitely for sure so uh, and then again coming back to the previous point again so i just whenever i come across a unique uh, kind of crime which has happened or even just the normal one uh, i just filter it out what all i can reuse in my uh, stories and then get try to get into the head of the uh, criminal as to uh, where would this journey have been started because people are not criminal from their from the inception of their time right there are some events incidents which turn in which uh, imbibe those qualities in in the head of those criminals right so mm. for me it's more like justifying it from the other pov from the criminal's point of view as to this is the only option which was left for me if not only so this was the best thing which i could have done to get some of my results so yeah i take inspiration from real world events uh, big time that's number 1 number 2 all my characters are basically inspired by people who i interact with very freely frequently so um, just to give you an example shahid in my book the lead character he enjoys t after every frequent breaks that is something a trait of mine then uh, the bonding between shahid and sajid the two brothers that's something which is inspired by my me and my brothers bonding uh, the character of jamal uh, is inspired by a tea stall guy who uh, i met during my college days so i uh, base my characters on the people i interact frequently with so mm-hmm. that at least i have a ready reckoner for the traits uh, for those characters 
so yeah in even the events i can take learnings from i keep taking learnings from what all is happening in real world and the characters are also majorly inspired by real world characters right okay cool so uh we're drawing to a close uh before that i think a couple of more things one any questions for each other i mean do you have any questions that you want to ask each other i mean you can do so i've been the one asking questions so if you have any questions you can ask i have a question for you for me yes okay what happened to that book you were writing about the story idea that you told me i want to ask which one i have i have three ideas in my mind no no the one which you were so kicked about the one uh, with the ship i'm not going to talk more about it but the one the, the ship, ship one is gone it's it's sailed Why? off it's sailed off it's a castaway it's gone <laughs> Why did you forget about it or what? I didn't forget. It's it just, was so nice. It was nice. It just didn't resonate with me after a time. Maybe it will later on. There, there was there was one more. Uh, the the one that I lost some part of because mm -hmm. my laptop crashed. Yeah. Uh, that I'm I'm thinking of resurrecting actually. I started okay. reading that book again. Okay. So I've, I've, I'm I'm thinking of resurrecting that one and the okay. my main one. I don't know when I'm gonna write that. The the okay. magnum opus, if I might call it. Okay. That's okay. gonna take a lot of time, so I'm not even attempting it. Maybe, maybe when I become a father and my child is more than six years old, I'll start writing that. Wow! Trust me, that's not gonna happen. Mine maybe. are turning. Yeah, mine, mine are seventeen and thirteen. So well, you'll need another pandemic when everybody's at home. So you can know where the uh, 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 inspiration for Preeti's books, characters, main characters have come from. <laughs> It's an yeah. open secret, really. Daughters, yeah. Yes, yeah. Mine absolutely. is 15. My daughter is 15. Yeah. I mean, uh, teenage daughters are, uh, they are a gold mine of inspiration. You know, their <laughs> emotions and their reactions and everything. So, yeah. Then and I'll, wait, and... I'll wait for my daughter to be born and then turn a teenager. Yeah, yeah. I mean, daughters especially, uh, yeah. they, they have a range of emotions. I mean, they're yeah. so just just so dramatic. Yeah, Every, yeah, yeah, very very dramatic. Yeah, yes. anything you say, you're making me so angry, and I'm, yeah. I, I just breathe. Yeah, you know, I was just breathing. Yeah. Yes, there was <laughs> honestly, honestly, not a not a not a day goes by when I when I think, yeah, I should have a daughter. <laughs> oh, you'll you'll have a feel there. Yeah, yes, every day. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So that was what my husband also wanted. He so he got his wish. He has two daughters and they wrote on him. So I'm like uh, the only one guiding my goalposts. So yeah. there's nobody on I've, my team. I've always heard that daughters are more close to their father. Yeah. Uh, so That's true. Yeah. yeah, I just I just want to make my team strong. Why would I let Chitra's team be strong, you know, with the son? Because sons are always mama's boys. Absolutely. I know that for a fact. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. So why would I why why would I let her team get strong? I might my team should be strong. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That that happens. That's that by default. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Also, also yeah. completely non-book related <laughs> observation. But Abhishek is the only unmarried person in this panel. Yeah, that's what I said at the beginning. Yeah, right? yeah. Oh, you, you said I did, an unmarried I guy it. in a table full of married folks. You are yeah. bound to have crime fiction out of this. <laughs> oh no, my latest book was a crime thriller. Uh, oh. uh, yeah, yeah. Don't don't worry. Yeah, I I told you everybody's fascinated with serial killers. Yeah, that's true. Because somewhere I think it's uh, it's it's somewhere a very human tendency deep down. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That that happens. It so it is. So, it's so, a, it's the conditioning. The conditioning suppresses it. Yes, but, but hey, kahi pe, because uh, sometimes when my younger daughter uh, is in one of her fits of rage, just a minute, just a minute. I, I'm, I'm guessing we'll have to put a disclaimer before this video. What? Some, some <laughs> sort of disclaimer needs to be there. Yeah, yeah, we are not serial killers that way, right? Since it's <laughs> going to go in the public domain. So she was in one of those uh, fits of rage. And uh, it was against uh, a rant against someone we knew. We both know. I'm not going to uh, tell where that person belongs from. But 
the violence in her uh, it it was a very innocent violence but violence nevertheless a very tom and jerry ish thing but it was there and then it went on to everybody in that category so she was i elder one was like uh, you know talking like a serial killer that if to remove this evil i have to become one i might just do it mummy you were asking me what i want to become in life probably serial killer so that gave me some more <laughs> meat Okay, so before 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 we wrap up, we'll play yeah. a little game of five minutes. Okay. Okay. So the game is this: Ah, uh, Suman will try to sell her. We'll pitch her book to Lavanya. Preeti will pitch her book to Abhishek. Abhishek will pitch your book to Ah uh, Suman, and Lavanya will pitch uh, her book to Preeti. Two minutes pitch that say that you meet Suman. Suman say that you meet Lavanya for the first time, right? and okay. you want her to read your book to buy your book she is a potential reader customer so you have to pitch her within 2 minutes and that's that's is an elevator pitch you get onto the elevator in the, on the ground floor and you go into the 10th floor that's all the time you have okay okay so lavanya what would you do if you met someone you like them but then they died you know you would always want them to come back right we just discussed that absolutely absolutely yes yeah. yeah so in my book this is exactly what happens a guy falls in love meets this girl falls in love but then she dies and so he goes lengths to resurrect her so that you know he gets to spend time with her all, all the time in the world like eternity with her so that's the theme of my book and that, any romantic any romantic that, that really touches the romantic in me actually yes see i exploited that oh, yeah, that's somebody who made a sale book. you got one more sale on your kindle pip oh yeah <laughs> okay cool uh so who's lavan is going to pitch uh, your okay. book to uh, Who, who are you going to pitch to, Priti? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I guess this. Uh, again, so I will ask you, like you know, if you really want to, you know, you're at some point in your life where you you think um, my life could have gone differently, and uh, then you wish. Oh, um, have you ever wished, like you know, oh my God, I wish I had something to take me back in time. so that i could either undo something or i could meet someone or i could you know uh, undo a particular event so that my life would turn out differently have you ever felt that way you know always yeah yeah then you know this is a story of a woman who actually defies the laws of time to try and save the one she loves so I do hope you know that uh, storyline appeals to you. <laughs> that's nice. That's nice. That's that's something that will appeal to anybody who's been in love. Defying time to save, uh, yeah, that was nice. Thank you. Yeah, nice to hear that. <laughs> so, Priti, sale or no sale? Yes, sale definitely. Sale, sale. Okay. Yes. And and if and 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 remember, while before Preeti came along, we were talking about giving reader sufficient time to read a book. Yeah. You give it to Preeti, she finish it in the night. Yeah. Oh, uh, seriously? Yes. Preeti and Chitra are the two people I know who can finish a book before you can finish watching a movie. My goodness! I I I also read very fast. Ah, I I I'm not aware of your pace, but I'm aware of her and uh, Chitra's pace, honestly. Because there was a there was an incident. Okay, I'd like to share this. There was an incident where we had decided to read a book together, me and Chitra. Okay, this was before marriage. So we had decided that there is a there is a book cafe. We are going to go there. We are going to order coffee and we are going to read the book together. Fine. I couldn't go that day because of some work. that night chitra told me that i started reading the book right 
she just told me i i i started reading the book so i i thought okay it's a 400 page or 380 pages or something okay she must have read something i'll just read up what she has read i'll, I'll catch up on it and we'll read it together and she no you didn't get me i started and finished it's it's done i went to the cafe i ordered a cappuccino right a large one or a latte whatever it was and she finished the book and i'm like okay it would take me 10 days to finish a 380 page book so let it be so we do not do any reading together because i read very slowly you're not a you're not a good buddy reader and and yeah. preeti the day my book released okay i receive it's i i released it in the evening right and i and i receive a text from at night 130 hey i loved your book whatever i'm like okay you love the blurb you love what did you love <laughs> but no, no i finished it it's done wow it went nice and bad at the same time nice means okay somebody has read the book on the first day and you know read the entire thing at a single sitting and bad is here i've given so much of effort and you gave so little effort in reading it i gave so much of effort in writing it <laughs> okay so uh, uh, uh mm-hmm. preeti please yes. pitch your book to abhishek okay uh abhishek uh do you like indiana jones yes love it uh, do you love uh, do you like dan brown's book yes uh, and uh, do you like sherlock holmes sherlock holmes is a favorite and uh, do you remember any uh, indian detective story uh, byomkesh bakshi yeah. byomkesh bakshi as yes, you love byomkesh bakshi the cerebral thing what if i tell you that uh, i'm going to give you all of this rolled into one book but with two sisters uh two teenage sisters uh at the center of it and they keep solving mysteries towards a larger mystery in the entire series which is very well which is rooted in indian history and uh, mythology i'd say sounds like a plan bring <laughs> yes. it on <laughs> yes then please go and read scar roses Definitely, that's exactly what you get <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> so how was the pitch bang on very good yeah. yeah, only if preeti had, had asked me the 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 way she started did you do you like indiana jones i would have said 1 2 3 1 2 3 from the first movie to the third movie not yeah, the fourth yeah, and yeah. fifth okay okay first movie to the third movie that's all yeah okay yeah. abhishek you're the last one left you have to pitch your book to someone okay okay not someone, an easy so thing to do for warning yeah yeah okay So Suman, I'll pick it up. Pick it up from where you left it with Lavanya. Uh, just think about anyone you love the most, and then just imagine a situation uh, where one day that person suddenly goes missing. Uh, what will you do? You'll go uh, to the best of your possible lens to figure out what has happened and where is that person, right? Uh, this is precisely the situation the lead character in my book, Shahid, is in. and he uh, has lost his brother he doesn't know about uh, his brother sajid's existence he approaches the uh, police but then even they are helpless because the case is so complicated and then day day in and day out what happens uh, with but the passage of time is that the only people who would be knowing about shahid's existence are have started to vanish so it in itself gives you an idea that something is fishy something uh larger is happening uh, here and then when you get into the details you uncover the truth uh, an entirely different truth so that's what my book is about uh, that was the broad pitch but at the end of the day this is a uh, classic popcorn uh, book you can have because i have provided different povs for murders i have uh, included the mysteries to the core of it you can keep thinking about uh, what is going to happen next so um, why don't you give this a try Sure. I mean, yeah, every human looks for closure if something happens to them. So, yeah, I get it. I totally get the sentiment. And guess what? I read your book. <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we have made sales. The the only thing is I want to ask a question. Do you like reading books? It's a I read book every day. Right. Yes. I No, it's a, it's in yes or no. It's a yes or no question. Do you like reading books? Absolutely. Yes. I have a book. Go and read it. <laughs> oh, that's. Milani, I bought your book. I've read your book. I've read. No, that was my pitch. Oh, that was. <laughs> okay. Oh, that was your pitch. Wow, that was like, that was amazing. That yeah. didn't work. That didn't work at all. 
<laughs> I, 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 my pitch doesn't have to be successful it just has to be a pitch yeah that was a very bad one no say no <laughs> yeah no say you're bound to i don't care <laughs> exam de sakti on your books uh okay i i i'd rather you not so uh okay we are done with this episode i, I mean thank you so much it was great any last thoughts anything any any parting words it could be anything anything before yes. we wrap up i i need one uh, i need some encouragement from the fellow authors here you have been talking about writers block what about blocking the writer uh, what happens when life starts blocking the writer in you what do you do there what would be your words of motivation to a the writer who is blocked to all of you it's a question it's 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 a plea actually to motivate what happens when life blocks the writer in you not i would i would i would i would uh, i i would not rather not answer it but ask it because it is the is what precisely what's happening to me that is i'm i'm a the... really bad i'm a really bad person to I'm give not motivation not. because i believe <laughs> in the flow of life so i feel that if life is trying to steer you somewhere else yeah. maybe that's where you need to go that's that's what i would say so <laughs> that's me that that, um, that works actually that helps Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have a bit different take on this, and then again, like all of us, uh, sometimes it what happens is you entirely lose track of time, and you fo- uh, lose your focus on the writing part because there are other priorities at hand. Uh, so how I try to bring myself back into writing is so. Uh, someone once I attended one session, I don't know by whom, but one quote has stayed with me that. Uh, Uh, there is not uh, let me let me phrase it properly it was something like there is no paucity of time with anyone it's always about priorities so if you are able to prioritize it in your schedule so uh, whatever is taking up my time at least i ensure that i am getting 15 to 20 minutes every day for writing if if it's in my priority list so there are days like the diwali break where i was into different things altogether so then it had gone for a toss but now again i'm back to bangalore i'm back into my regular routine uh, this is a daily thing now again uh, happening to me so it's all about prioritizing where you keep it in your current set of priorities today's and this week's priorities is how much time will you give it to this task i think i think i think it's 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 true it's it's what uh, you know you prioritize also i think it's about uh, how much patience can you keep sometimes you just have to do something else in life you just can't help it but that doesn't mean that you can't ever go back to doing what you like or what you love or 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 maybe you can give some some certain time not to maybe i want to write a novel perhaps but i'm not getting the time to write a novel so i end up writing a short story it's still writing you know and i keep the creative juices flowing a uh, suman would know this i mean we are we are planning an uh, there's a, this uh, group of people who have come together for an anthology uh so this entire group was made and and i think i was a very late inducted into it i was not even supposed to be a part of it somebody pulled out and then uh, 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 uh lee said asked me that whether i want to join it or not i really wanted to be the first one to say that i've re- finished my story you know i mean i don't know who has finished it before me maybe some people have but i wanted to be the first one in the group to say that i have finished my story so i sat down two nights and i finished my story yeah, so was, sometimes it just Huh? I was amazed. I was amazed you came in uh, really late, and you already finished it. So it was. Yeah, it was good. I wanted to. I wanted to be the first one to finish the story among the group. So I, yeah. I gave it some. As Avishak said, I, I prioritized it. I gave it some priority. Sat down two nights and and wrote it. Okay, cool. I think uh, we've had an excellent session. We've had a lot of uh, uh, good conversations about about books. Some pretty dark conversations as well, but that you can't help when there is. what there's scarred roses there's i subscribe by hook up by crook and letters of line lavanya you're alone there time and tide wait for love serves like a very soothing title <laughs> you know time and tide wait for love yeah it's it's a much more soothing title very... than by hook up by crook or scarred roses you know <laughs> it's it's a it's a nice thing and you know it's a very uh, inspirational title yeah it Thank is you. Thank, you. Thank you thank you for that it is it is it is all the best for your book all the best for all of your books i will not Thank say you. for my book at all because i'm Thank not doing you. anything with it as i said so all the best for all of your books and to anyone watching this 
I hope you enjoyed this discussion, this roundtable. This was our second episode. The first episode is on our channel. You can go back and watch it. If you have subscribed to our channel, if you have not, please do so now. There's a like button. There's a subscribe button. Press all the buttons that you can. Uh, not the dislike one. There is a there's a lot of a lot of things coming up. We recently had our uh, first physical event, TCC Writers Rendezvous. That video is also up on our YouTube channel. Please have a look at it. And we're going to have a lot of bookish yeah. content coming up in uh, December and mostly from January onwards. So we are revamping our YouTube channel. So there'll be a lot of writer's content, a lot of content for writers, a lot of content for readers. So please do uh, keep an eye on it and subscribe to TCC. Uh, thank you very much and uh, have a great life. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Good time.